Justin, you specialise in animal colours and pigments and so on? Yeah, that's right. My interest is why animals are colourful. And the answer is probably they're talking to each other all the time with their colours. And the latest one that particularly interested us was the fact that you've found secret colours on the budgerigar. Yeah, fluorescent colours, colours that really shine out to the budgies themselves. We don't really see them very well, um, but budgerigars are very good at seeing their own fluorescence, and they use these to attract the opposite sex. What cunning experiments did, did you set up to try and prove what these things do? We made budgies choose between other budgies, some of which had Vaseline smeared on their head with sunblock in. Now sunblock blocks out the fluorescence. The others had Vaseline on their head but without the sunblock, so it was like a control. So we had two slick-headed budgies sitting next door to each other, one of which fluoresced and one of which didn't. We asked females to choose between a slick-head male with fluorescence versus a slick-head male without fluorescence, and invariably she chose the one with the fluorescence. Well, as I'm sure you know, Burke's Backyard is actually shot each week in my own backyard. No makeups, no scripts, it's real. This is my shed, and this is the way we've worked out how to photograph budgerigars for television under ultraviolet light. So we've got a number of these ultraviolet lights here. That's one there. They're the sort of lights you get down at the disco or whatever it might be. Glass fronted cage. Made that myself. It's, it, notice it's off skew. It's a really bad job of carpentry, but it's painted with basic beige paint, which is the best colour for neutral. Brought up the budgies here. And this uh, shed, of course, once you turn the lights off, is, is pretty dark. And that's exactly what we want to find out what happens to these budgies under UV light. This is your wild coloured budgerigar, a light green budgerigar. And you'll notice that when we put the fluorescent light on it, it gets a real kick around the face. And this is an identical coloured budgie. This is a light blue budgie. It's identical in colour to the other one, except it lacks yellow pigment. And that's why it looks blue. And notice, no fluorescing whatsoever. Equally, the albino doesn't fluoresce. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, hang on, maybe it's just the yellow colour there because there's no black on it because the rest of it's got black markings. So what we've got here now is a lutino. Notice it's uniformly yellow. It's going to be very interesting to see when we turn the light off if it fluoresces all over or just in those areas for the sexual display. So I'll turn the light off. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Now that bird has completely changed. It now looks greyish or brownish or blackish on the body and it's got that huge fluorescent area. So the pattern's quite clear. If you don't have the yellow pigment, you don't have any fluorescing. So remember, this bird might look yellow to us, but when the girls look at him, that is what they see. This is a baby budgie. It's not actually out of the nest box yet, so it's got its immature plumage. I suppose you'd guess that if the ultraviolet pigment is a bit of a turn-on for the opposite sex, you'd think the babies may not have it. So as you've seen, it's a yellow. It's a black-eyed yellow, not a lutino. We'll now turn the lights off and see if it's got any at all of this. Well, it's nowhere near as bright on the forehead. It's there, but it's not stunning. So what does it all add up to? Well, wild budgerigars have ultraviolet pigment around their facial area, which is important in attracting members of the opposite sex. It's part of the yellow pigment gene that's in all wild budgies. In captive varieties, the blue ones, which don't have that yellow pigment, they don't produce that ultraviolet colour at all. Now, what does that mean? Well, I suppose what it means is that if you get a mixed aver and chuck a lot of budgies in, the blue ones are much less likely to find a mate than the green ones. So you'll finish up breeding a lot more green budgies or yellow budgies or any of that series than you will the blue series. But what we also found out was the boys have the pretty face, so do the girls. So basically both sexes have it. The babies have it, but to a lesser degree. So obviously the babies are not as sexually attractive as the adults, but adult boys and girls are equally attractive. But if you happen to be a blue budgie or a white budgie, any of the ones without yellow, it could be a lonely life. Now, after all of that, you're probably wondering about the poor, sad, blue or white budgie. How does it ever manage to have babies? Well, basically, for the serious breeders like myself, 
you put one pair of budgies in a cage, so obviously the male or the female, either one of them, really doesn't have any choice about a mate. They're put together, and here's a case of a pair of blue budgerigars. Well, there's no one else to mate with, so they've got no real choice. And uh, when you look at the results, despite the fact that the blue ones might be not perhaps quite as attractive, the stacks of these babies in here, there's a huge nest of... But as you can see, the blues breed very well and they will mate with one another, but I presume if this pair of blues had the choice of a green-type budgie, well, perhaps they'd, uh, they'd have chosen someone else.